When Aena didn't return from his confrontation with the Witch King, word of his fall spread like wildfire across Gondor. The Witch King's forces were regrouping, rapidly seizing lands once under Aena's rule. Some regions fell so quickly that letters sent by the first ruling steward of Gondor, Mardil, never reached their destinations. For generations we stored the unread letters here, destined to remain forever sealed. We know those lost Gondorians will never claim their letters, but we keep them to honor their memory. I wonder what will become of the last few letters I sent on my father's behalf. In the Great Hall of Minas Ethel, we didn't just safeguard the treasures of our past, we kept our present there as well, an archive of all our official correspondence with the capital. I used to file away missives from Minas Tirith after my father had read them. This was a weekly task at first, but as our surroundings grew more dangerous, scrolls like this one became more rare. I wonder whether there were promises of aid that the orcs intercepted, plans for relief that we never saw. The workings of government. This pipe is purported to be the creation of hobbits, a sort of halfling that lives beyond our reckoning in the north. I wonder at the strange notion of full-grown adults who scarcely reach my waist in height. But after what I've seen in Mordor, a hobbit would be a welcome sort of strange. Though I don't think a hobbit would last long in Mordor. Now all I need is some pipeweed, which you won't find for leagues in any direction. Sauron, just as we do. We might not have the Palantir, but we do have her visions. No, triangle! I wonder if the elves have mundane objects as we do, for even their common containers and vessels seem uncommonly fine. This artifact was once part of a table setting given as a gift centuries ago. The other parts were broken when one of Mordor's many ground tremors knocked them off a shelf. How I wish my predecessors had saved the broken shards. That's a puzzle I'd like to reassemble. Elven things deserve to last. What sort of feasts do the elves have? Stake the affairs, not as raucous as orcs, or men. We Gondorians called Minisethal home, 
but we cannot claim to have built it. That honor belongs to exiles from the fabled realm of Numenor beyond the Sundering Seas. Wondrous architects, they fashioned this city of marble to reflect the moonlight and glow with an inner warmth. But the city's beauty and light drew the ire of the Witch King, who has long sought revenge on Gondor. The Numenorean's knack for towers rivals the elves. Who do you think taught them? They were but precocious students. Gondorian folk tales abound with drakes, lesser versions of the great dragons who supposedly slumber under the earth. Yet here in Mordor, I've seen them with my own eyes, though from a safe distance, and they are nothing like the storybooks say. They are lethal hunters of the air, rapacious and cruel, apt to torment their prey before eating it. This scale, taken from a drake carcass we found in a growl cave, gives some sense of their size and how strong they must be to carry such weight aloft. The wind. <laughs> Scale of a drake or a full-fledged dragon? Certainly a drake. Dragons take better care of their scales. <laughs> Father always said, a proper war banner has two roles, to direct and to inspire. In the chaos of battle, he'd say, you won't march wrong if you keep your flag in sight. Now the orcs have cast down our banners, but Gondor's flag still inspires, even if I see it only in my mind's eye. So long as one Gondorian lives, the white tree still stands tall. The Red Arrow is one of Gondor's most treasured symbols, though few know just what it symbolizes. When our need is dire, we can present the arrow to the men of Rohan, and they are bound by ancient pact to ride to our aid. We should have used it in the early days of the siege, but the orcs encircled us so quickly, and Rohan is too far away. I wonder whether Rohan would honor this arrow if they saw it. Difficult to say. 
Men have short memories, and shorter still in a crisis. The orcs are obsessed with rings, more so than coins or jewelry of equal value. They snatch them from prisoners immediately, and what happens to these rings is anyone's guess. We rarely find orcs actually wearing them. A fine ring, but I gather it's an ordinary one. Ha! <laughs> Scarcely worth the same name as the ring we created. Gondor has faced the Witch King before, and he's had a vendetta against Minisethal ever since. This coin depicts the victor, Aena, last king of Gondor. Generations ago, Aena led an army that routed the Witch King and sent his army fleeing to Angmar. But our victory turned hollow when our king grew prideful. The Witch King challenged Aena to single combat, and Aena rode eastward from Minas Tirith, never to be seen again. It takes a nation to defeat such evil, not just one man. Eleanor, he who fought the Witch King. Twice, because he did not finish the task the first time. Each city in Gondor administers its own justice in all but the most important cases. And in my lifetime, we've always handled legal matters in Minisethal. When I was a girl, I recall my father being much occupied with mercantile disputes and other legal affairs. Then the orcs came, and matters of justice yielded to matters of survival. The gavel. Always seemed an odd symbol for justice. What is justice, if not a hammer to beat down the proud nail?